This tutorial will demonstrate how to control and measure the speed of a brushless DC motor from the Raspberry Pi using a low-cost electronic speed controller, also known as an ESC. My videos are fast-paced, but all the code, notes, and updates are available on my website, and a link will be placed in the description. This video will show how to connect a three-phase motor salvaged from a hard drive to the Raspberry Pi. A Python program will control an electronic speed controller using hardware pulse width modulation, or PWM. A TCRT 5000 infrared reflection sensor will be used to calculate RPM measurements. And an I2C 7 segment numeric LED display will show the speed. And a BCD push wheel will allow user input as a throttle. Here's a defective hard drive that I pulled from a server. It's no longer good for storage, but it has several useful components that can be salvaged, such as a brushless DC motor, which has many advantages over a brushed motor, such as reduced noise, better efficiency, lighter weight, less EMI, more torque, and longer lifespans because you don't have brush and commutator erosion. The drive also has two powerful neodymium magnets, a bearing, small screws, and lots of casting quality aluminum. This particular hard drive has the motor stamped into the case and it spins smoothly, which is a good sign. The rare earth magnets are very strong, so please be careful because they're dangerous. You don't want to get your fingers caught between them like a mouse trap. I'll remove the rotor from the motor. The dark ring inside its cups are permanent magnets. The stator contains nine copper coils arranged radially. I'm not going to go into depth on how a brushless motor works, but simplistically, the controller will alternate power to three windings. At any given time, one third of the coils are attracting the rotor magnets, while another third are repelling, which causes rotation. The unused third produces back EMF, which can be used by some controllers to determine the rotational position. I recently picked up several discarded hard drives at a local e-waste drive. Unlike the hard drive I just disassembled, these motors were mounted with screws, affording easy removal. They have four solder points for easy wiring to the ESC. Many BLDC motors have four terminals, but only three are used with the ESC. These three connect to the windings. The fourth is a common, sometimes called a star point. Each winding will have a similar resistance, which let's call X ohms. The resistance between the common and any winding should be X ohms and the resistance between two windings is approximately 2x ohms. Therefore, we can use a meter to determine which three are the windings. Some motors like this one have three terminals for the three windings, but this one here has four. I have my multimeter set to measure resistance. The middle two terminals show about 2.7 ohms. The second and fourth are also 2.7 ohms, and the last two are, again, 2.7 ohms. Therefore, the left terminal has to be the common and should be around half and it's about 1.4 ohms, which indicates we need to connect the ESC to the right three terminals. I've mounted the motor to a piece of plywood and I've soldered on three wires to the winding terminals and attached a drive platter spray painted flat black with a piece of reflective tape on both sides. The tape will help the reflective sensor measure speed. Hard drive motors can spin at speeds in excess of 10,000 RPM, which can be very dangerous. If a piece of metal comes loose, it could be traveling over 100 miles per hour which can pierce skin or worse. Please use protective clothing and eyewear, fasten all spinning parts securely, and ensure everything is safely contained. Here's an ESC that I picked up on eBay for $3 and change. I added the Anderson power pole connectors for easy hookups. It's rated for 30 amps, which will easily accommodate the hard drive motor. The large red and black wires are for power. I'll be using a 12 volt wall power supply, but you could use batteries too. The three blue wires connect to a three phase brushless DC motor. The smaller three wires consist of a white input to control the ESC via PWM and a red-black for the BEC output, which provides 5 volts. I was able to use the BEC to power the Pi, but this cheap ESC didn't come with any specs and it started to run very hot, so I'll just power my Pi using a separate 5 volt power supply. Here's the wiring to hook up the ESC. The blue wires connect to the motor winding terminals. The order only affects the direction of rotation. The large red and black wires are connected to a 12 volt DC power source. The white input wire is connected to GPIO 13, which will control the speed via PWM. The small black BEC ground wire is connected to the Pi ground because the devices require a common ground. The red BEC wire is left disconnected. A TCRT 5000 non-contact reflective optical sensor we use to measure the speed of the motor. This inexpensive four pin package is comprised of an infrared LED and a photo transistor. The LED will shine invisible IR light on the black spinning disc. Each revolution of the reflective tape will fire the phototransistor, which acts like a switch allowing pulses of current to flow from the collector pin to the emitter pin. 
The pie can then be used to measure these pulses to ascertain the RPM. I milled a small breadboard for the TCRT5000. The dip trace files can be downloaded free from my website. The top pin is 5 volts, the middle pin is ground, a 100 ohm resistor limits current to the IR LED, 1100 and 2000 ohm resistors create a voltage divider to reduce the voltage down to a pi safe level around 3 volts. The 10K resistor pulls the bottom pin up and it will get pulled low when enough light is reflected back to the sensor. If you don't want to make it yourself, there are several inexpensive comparable breakout boards on eBay, some under a dollar. Many have both digital and analog outputs. The TCRT5000 breakout board is connected to the Pi's 5 volt and ground pins, and the signal output is connected to GPIO14. You can use any GPIO pin as long as you specify it in your code. The same goes for the ESC PWM. This hard drive motor can spin at just under 10,000 RPM, so a 4 digit numeric LED display will work well as a tachometer. I designed and milled a simplified version of the Adafruit 0.56 inch LED backpack. The dip trace files are available on my website. It's controlled by an HT16K33, which is a great inexpensive I2C chip that can drive up to 128 LEDs. In my previous spectrum analyzer video, I demonstrated the HT16K33 in more details. Again, if you don't feel like making one, a comparable one can be purchased from Adafruit. I2C makes wiring the display easy. The display VCC goes to a 3.3 volt pin on the Pi. The grounds are connected. SDA and SCL are connected, which are GPIO 2 and 3 on the Pi, respectively. You do have to use GPIO 2 and 3 for I2C, unless you want to bit bang the protocol. A push wheel switch will be used to set the motor speed. They are also sometimes referred to as thumb wheel switches or BCD switches. The two buttons allow the user to select a value from 0 to 7. It will provide 7 speed levels and an off position for the motor. The switch has 4 wires, 3 are BCD outputs, and the fourth is a common. BCD stands for Binary Coded Decimal. It only uses 3 GPIO pins for 8 digits because the mechanical switch represents the selection in binary. In other words, when you select a number, the switch's output pins will change state to match the base 2 version of the displayed number. An open switch is a 0 bit, and a closed switch is a 1 bit. For example, the number 6 base 10 is equivalent to 110 in base 2. If you select 6 on the switch, the first two pins are on, and the last pin is off with respect to the common. The push wheel switch's three outputs are connected to GPIO 16, 20, and 21. Optional 10K current limiting resistors can be used to protect the Pi. The push wheel common terminal is often connected high to 3.3 volts, but I'll connect it to ground instead because it works well with my existing connector. It will negate the binary numbers, but this can be easily fixed in code. The push wheel is simple to connect to the Pi because the GPIO pins are designed to read high or low states. The switch provides user input functionality similar to a potentiometer but doesn't require an analog to digital converter, which the Pi doesn't have. I securely attached the TCRT5000 board, the push wheel switch, and the LED display to my plywood base. I'll start by connecting the ESC's three brushless motor outputs to the hard drive motor terminals. Again, the order of the wires determines which direction the motor will spin. You can swap them to reverse the direction. I'm using a 12 volt 2 amp DC power supply. It's a little underpowered and will limit how fast I can accelerate, but should be good enough for this demo. It plugs into the large red and black wires on the ESC. Red is positive and black is negative. The thumb wheel switch came with a connector that fits well over GPIO 16, 20, 21, and ground on the Pi. I'm skipping the 10K resistors from my previous schematic because they're just optional safeguards. The small white PW input wire on the ESC is connected to GPIO 13 on the Pi. The Pi will send pulses on this line to control the motor speed. The small black ground wire on the ESC is connected to a ground pin on the Pi. This is required because they need to share a common ground. The small 5 volt red wire on the ESC should be left disconnected, although it could be used as an alternative 5 volt power source. The VCC pin on the backpack display is connected to a 3.3 volt pin on the Pi. The display ground is connected to a ground pin on the Pi. The backpack SDA is connected to the Pi's SDA which is GPIO2. The backpack SCL is connected to the Pi's SCL, which is GPIO3. The 5 volt power pin on the TCRT5000 board is connected to a 5 volt pin on the Pi. The ground is connected to a ground pin on the Pi. And finally, the sensor output pin is connected to GPIO14 on the Pi. By the way, the sensor's IR LED is placed just under the black disc, so it'll paint the reflective tape, which is applied to the bottom too. Okay, the hardware is ready. 
Before proceeding, please make sure your Pi is up to date with sudo apt-get update and sudo apt-get upgrade. I also recommend that you use a freshly wiped Pi with the latest version of Raspbian Jesse. It comes preloaded with many of the libraries we'll be using. In order to use I2C, it must be enabled. From the Raspberry Pi main menu, click Preferences, and then click Raspberry Pi Configuration. Select the Interfaces tab, and then click Enable I2C. Click OK to close. We can now use the I2C Detect Utility to ensure that the LED backpack display is properly wired. The table shows a single I2C device at hex address 70, which is the default for the HT16K33. Pseudo pip install makes it easy to install the Adafruit LED Backpack Python library and its dependencies. The PyGPIO library will be used for pulse width modulation. It comes pre-installed with Raspbian and Jesse. However, we'll still need to download the RPM monitor module. From the PyGPIO website main page, click Examples. Click Python code and then scroll down. Click RPM Monitor to download it. Right-click the zip file and click Extract To. I placed the contents in the Documents folder. The zip contained a single Python library called readRPM. Open the file using idle. It contains a class called Reader which reads pulses and calculates RPM. The constructor takes a Pi, which is a Pi GPIO instance. GPIO is the GPIO pin number to monitor for pulses. Optional pulses per rev is how many pulses per revolution, default is 1. Optional weighing can be used to smooth out the pulse data, it defaults to disabled. Optional min RPM just specifies the minimum RPM, the default is 5. RPM under 5 would return 0. The class is easy to use. There's a method called RPM. When called, it returns the RPM. The Documents folder also contains a Python library I created called Quad Numeric. It extends the Adafruit LED Backpack Library and will be used to control the LED display. If you buy the module from Adafruit, they provide their own library, which is very similar, and I used it as a blueprint. My board has slightly different wiring, which necessitated this library. From the Adafruit LED Backpack, HT16K33 is imported. Digit values are binary representations of font digits. iDigit value is the same but for inverted displays. There's a single class called Quad Numeric. The constructor has one optional parameter to invert the display. You can also manually invert the display with the setInvert method. SetDigitRaw is used by other methods to draw a digit using a bit mask. SetDigit draws a specified digit at a specified position. Print number string prints a numeric string to the display. Print float prints a number. However, unlike the Adafruit board, mine doesn't support decimals and print hex prints hexadecimal numbers. Before we run any code, it's necessary to start the PyGPIO daemon using sudo pygpio d. Now we can open idle from the desktop. No special permissions are required. I'll open a new file and save it in my documents folder and name it bldc. From time sleep is imported. pygpio is imported. From read rpm, reader is imported. RPI GPIO is imported. It'll be used to read the push wheel switch. And quad numeric is imported for the LED display. A quad numeric display is instantiated hex address 70, which we confirmed with I squared C detect. The bus is 1. On older pies, the bus could be 0. Again, quad numeric is specific to my LED backpack design. If you're using an Adafruit display, you'd use the 7 segment class, which comes with the backpack library. Basically, just change quad numeric to 7 segment. Begin initializes the display. Set brightness sets the display brightness, which can be from 0 to 15. I'm using 0 because the dimmer display is easier to film. Set mode sets the GPIO numbering to BCM format. Pi is instantiated to connect to the Pi GPIO. Before use, the ESC needs to be calibrated. GPIO 13 is specified for the ESC GPIO pin. Pi set servo pulse width initiates a pulse on GPIO 13. The pulse width is 2000 microseconds. This is the ESC maximum throttle. The program pauses for 2 seconds and then another pulse width of 1000 microseconds transmits. This is the ESC minimum throttle. Again, there's a 2 second pause. Most speed controllers will play a sound to indicate successful calibration. A note of warning, the ESC will retain calibration until it's disconnected from the power supply. If you run the above code on an ESC that's already been calibrated, the motor will spin up to high speed for 2 seconds, which you may not be ready for. 
A list called BCD holds the GPIO pins used by the push wheel switch. A for loop is used to set up the three pins as inputs with pull up resistors enabled. RPM GPIO sets the GPIO pin of the TCRT5000 sensor signal to 14. A sample time of 2 seconds sets how often the RPM will be pulled. A tachometer is instantiated from RPM reader. The Pi GPIO connection is passed along with the GPIO pin. An infinite while loop is enclosed in a try statement to catch errors. A speed variable is set to zero. The BCD switch pins are read to retrieve the user speed input. On Arduinos, you can just set a variable to a group of pins to retrieve a binary value. On the Pi, we have to use bitwise operations. The current pin value is read, high equals one and low equals zero. Since we connected the switch common to ground instead of VCC, it's necessary to toggle the bit by using exclusive OR 1. This flips 1s to zeros and zeros to 1s. The existing speed bits are left shifted one position to make room for the current bit. An OR operator inserts the current bit into the speed variable at the least significant digit. Bitwise operations can be difficult to grasp. It helps to play around in the Python shell and see how the different operations work. There's also several free calculator apps that support binary. This code just takes the binary hardware representation of the push switch value and converts it back to a decimal number. Set servo pulse width is used to set the pulse width on the ESC GPIO pin. The speed can be zero or a number between the minimum and maximum throttle 1000 to 2000. This is handled by multiplying the speed by 1000 and dividing by seven, then adding 1000. This makes zero off and spreads one through seven evenly between the valid range. The motor RPM is returned using the TAC RPM method. The LED display is cleared. Print float sends the RPM value to the display. However, the display does not update until the right display method is called. The program sleeps for the specified sample time and then the loop repeats. Finally is used to gracefully exit the program. The servo pulses are stopped. Pi stop disconnects from the Pi GPIO and the display is cleared with clear and right display. Okay, that's it for the code. The program's running, the motor's off, and the LED display shows zero for RPM. Pressing the push wheel switch increments the speed to one and starts the motor. The LED display shows 878 RPM and rising. Incrementing the switch causes the motor to accelerate. At 7, it's spinning over 9600 RPM. Decrementing the switch decelerates the motor. It does take a while to slow down. A non-contact laser tachometer can be used to check the speed readings. This is why I put reflective tape on the top of the disc as well as the bottom. Looks very accurate, within 1 RPM. There are a lot of DIY projects you can create with brushless motors, such as a POV display. I hope you found this video helpful. You can support this channel by subscribing and leaving a like. Thanks for watching.